Peace, oh please. It's Afis and my girlfriend Andrea, and she's gonna be asking me the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram, and I'm gonna answer them. So, here yeah. we go. Let's do it. I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> this question. Question number one by Flexity Reps. Do you love ice cream like that soft, creamy one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, uh, I do. I like ice cream, but w what I prefer to eat is like... He loves ice cream. He acts like he doesn't like ice cream. What do you cream? mean I love ice cream? I, I don't even eat ice cream. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to believe that he likes ice cream. I don't even, I like ice cream. Yeah, but the last time I ate ice cream, I can't. I couldn't even tell you. That, but we, uh, what? You you I don't feel know. like I remember. There's no way. Oh we, yeah. We ate no, sorbet. It was that. Right, sorbet. That's different though. That's he, not different. He said ice cream. Okay, well the last time was at Nina's Waffles. Oh yeah. And I true. got it, and guess what? He ate half of it. And how did I feel about it? Horrible. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really too happy, honestly. It was like no, too you sweet. always regret it. Oh, let me turn the, the volume down. Why? Like so why don't you like ice cream? I don't like ice cream? ice cream because there's way too much sugar, way too much fat. And, you know, we were watching this, like, a documentary, and they were saying that, like, dairy food is not, like, that great for you. So, like... Just like this whole combination, like it just doesn't make me feel good. Yeah. So like, what I like to eat is what we made ourselves. Well, yeah, that's we made good. our own homemade ice cream. Vegan. Vegan ice cream, it's made from frozen bananas, and nice cream. Yeah. Known as nice cream. Nice cream. Mm -hmm. Is that your term or is that the actual? No, that's the term. That's the term. Mm -hmm. Nice cream. So I love nice cream. Frozen bananas, well. <laughs> I was gonna say with peanut butter, but that's we blended that up, so that was like a smoothie, more right? No, cause no, cause we put all the ingredients in and blended it, and ate it as ice cream, cause it was super thick. I thought we drank it. Yeah, no. we drank it. No, we didn't. What? There was another time we made ice cream twice. Ah. Oh, okay. Once was with peanut butter and once was without it. But the one with peanut butter wasn't that good because your blender is horrible. Yeah, <laughs> they're all horrible. For yeah. some but and we also put cacao powder in there, and I think honey. Do we put honey uh, in there? Agave. I think. Agave, and we put agave in there, and that that is delicious. I love nice cream. What's your favorite <laughs> flavor ice cream? Just for the record. My favorite flavored ice cream. Like the bad ice cream. My favorite. All right, easy. Mint. I love mint. Just mint. Like yeah. plain mint. No. Mint. I mean, I like them with the chocolate chips. I hate chocolate chips and ice cream. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. It. Well, that that's my favorite ice cream for the record. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Um, Brian two one three zero says you play video games. Yeah, I do play video games. I mostly <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I play like with my little brother because like he does that a lot, and he's so good at Fortnite. He's amazing at Fortnite. So I'll play Fortnite with him, and sometimes yeah, he started Friday. playing with his brother, and then he just started playing all the time by himself. No, what are you talking about? No, I don't. I never do yeah, that. Yeah, you told me I came over, and you were like. <laughs> Oh, I was playing video games like alone or something. Yeah, yeah I with was, I like, was playing with Kevin like once. Yeah, <laughs> that was literally but it's one just time. Weird. It was one time. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I so just, I play oh. Fortnite with my little brother, and mm. yeah, and his friends and some of my friends, mostly just like Kevin, but only yeah. Fortnite. And right? Fortnite is like the only game I play. But before it's Fortnite, taking over the world, and I don't like it. It's so fun. <laughs> But, um, oh, I also Twitch stream. No, I don't. I, I did it before. I don't actually Twitch stream anymore, but maybe I should. Let me know in the comments below if I should Twitch stream more often, <laughs> oh if you want to see that. I forget. I actually don't remember my Fortnite or my Twitch account. I think it's just, it's obvious, actually. And, <laughs> and uh, Max is, no. my little brother, his is going to the max. One word, no spaces. I believe that's it, so. I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, oh, yeah, another great game that I really like to play, 
well, I haven't actually played it for a while, but it's really fun. It's Rocket League. Max and I would play that, and that was super oh, duper fun. Oh, that game is so frustrating. I don't know why she hates it so much, but I love it because I play. Because I suck at it. Yeah, well, no. Why? You, that's why you hate it? I just feel it. like it's so much harder than it has to be. I, I love it because it's a challenge, and it's like, I don't know. You can do so many cool things, like, because it's like and I've also playing, huh? I've only used Xbox controllers, like, a handful of times yeah. in my life. So, so you're not, like you're, so not e- you're not even good at it. Because I don't even know what yeah, button does yeah, what. Yeah, exactly. But I love it because, like, I played soccer, like, just about my whole life. I have dreams about soccer all the time. I don't, I don't play soccer anymore, but, um, yeah. So, it's a fun game. I haven't played it in a long time. but Yeah, so I don't really game that much by myself. Don't peek at the next question. <laughs> I peeked. <laughs> you already know what it is. Say I, it. I, I actually don't remember. I don't even remember okay. what it was, honestly. What's your morning routine like? What's my morning routine like? It's actually very... It's different... <laughs> actually for like every day honestly i mean yeah. I'll, I'll wake we up we both don't have routines at all no. it just depends on the day yeah i like i really like want to have a routine for myself yeah. because like i want to be like way more productive yeah. and make I sure i'm not wasting time i want to be that person who wakes up and like does their own juicing and then like yeah makes this amazing breakfast every morning mm-hmm. and yeah but that doesn't happen no it doesn't we usually make juice at night <laughs> It's yeah, like always Yeah, because we never have time in the morning. Yeah, because, like, she gets up early in the morning and the most of the time. And then I'll just, like, sometimes I'll work from home and sometimes I go into work on the weekends. But I'll, I'll usually wake up and I mean, it really depends. Like, sometimes I'll want to work and do my, like, social media work from home. Um, but other times, like, I'll just want to, like, work on my music and you know, do some Instagram stuff, make some posts, or write some lyrics, make uh, a beat, or make some kind of little video, and, um, but I think it, I try to, most of the time, wake up and, like, remind myself what I'm grateful for, because it's great to have gratitude to start the day like if you wake up and you're like i'm grateful for this i'm grateful for being alive that's just a great way to start the day because you're in such a positive mindset so that's one kind of routine thing i try to do and I, i'm sure a lot of people will be surprised but like in the yeah. morning i don't even i don't meditate in the mornings like i feel like that's a great time to do it but i really don't because i'm just so tired and like it will, like, kind of make me fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, so like, we usually have stuff to do. Yeah, we usually have stuff to do. So much stuff. Yeah, so, like, I'll just meditate throughout the day, like, at any time. Like, sometimes in the afternoon, but mostly at night. So, n- there's no s- set-in-stone morning routine. I don't have it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll let you guys know when I come up with it and if I stick with it mm. or what. So. Yeah. Yeah. Dizzy Spizzy asked, what are your favorite artists outside of hip-hop? What are my favorite artists? Oh, man, I I actually, I did know the question beforehand, and obviously, and I, like, wrote Mm -hmm. some down, and I can't, oh, oh, okay, so, Alice in Chains, Alice in Chains, I love them, the, who would have thought, the, the artist, or the singer is absolutely amazing, he's, like, one of my favorite singers of all time, he's got, like, this, like, cool, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like a little raspy I don't, I don't and know. it's just very unique and the slow guitar. I just I love the slow guitar. Just vibes that you really don't hear like anywhere else. Like it's grunge music, but like I've tried to find bands like them and I can't. Like there's no other grunge band that is like Alice in Chains. Mm-hmm. I mean the closest would be um God, what's that band like Black Sun or something? Black Sun. God, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> this we, is gonna get cut. <laughs> we, we, no, it's not. <laughs> it's fine. But we just talked about it last night. Like we mentioned it. Th- this band, whatever. It's not my, one of my favorites, so it doesn't matter. Any, but anyone Fleet else? Foxes, Fleet, Fleet Foxes. Foxes. They're so good. And you know I listen just to them. Just makes you feel like you're just prancing through a meadow. Yeah, exactly. Or like. You're going through the mountains, or I mean, that's what they sing about, like yeah. the the mountains. I think it's like based. They're based in maybe 
Colorado. I'm not really sure, <laughs> but it makes me feel like I'm there. Like I'm yeah, in the like in that. like surrounded by nature and like in the woods, and they have all these references to like animals, and it just yeah. Yeah, it makes me feel so good. <laughs> yeah. But another band I want to mention is Vampire Weekend. Vampire Weekend. Oh my god. I love them. The They're amount so of good. times I've heard the song "This Life" isn't that what it's called? This Life Bambina. <laughs> oh, I love that. They're so great. Their new album I've been listening to a lot. Before I would listen to their music, it was like in middle school, so like I didn't really, really? like. Yeah, it was like so long ago when I really listened to them. I had no idea. Because because I don't even think they had released anything in a while until this new mixtape or not mixtape album. <laughs> We're mm-hmm. not talking about rap. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like I like a lot of stuff with like acoustic guitar. I love acoustic guitar yeah. so much. I play acoustic guitar. Yeah. So uh, my favorite. You ready? For the so, next one? Oh, and um, I want to mention another band. I want to mention Metallica. Cause I like literally like grew up on Metallica. I don't know if it's because of my dad. My dad listened to Metallica a lot when he's like working. Mm-hmm. When I would help him work, or if he's working on our house. He would listen. He would listen to Metallica all the time, and it's just like, I just I don't know if that's where I fell in love with Metallica, but like, I love them. They're like this metal band. I don't know if you heard of them. They're pretty big. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, you probably haven't heard of them, but you know. literally, for the people who are only like into rap, if they're if you're watching this and you're into rap. You know, you know, like the little Uzi, right? Like how he can has that cool font with the like it goes out like this and has a little <laughs> spike at the bottom. It's like it basically looks like that, like the font. And so many people use this font, and it's it's from Metallica. Metallica is so dope. And actually, this is funny because Metallica that font it actually inspired my logo a little bit, and it inspired. Oh yeah, it has the point of the. Bottom. Yeah, it has, it has the like my logo is like like I know. I don't know, like this Metallica, the same sharp these jag- lines, yeah, kind of. sharp lines and these jagged edges. Like it inspired a lot of my, like doodles, actually, like throughout school when I'm just like sitting in class and stuff. But mm-hmm. Metallica has been a huge influence in my life and in my music. And I used to play their songs all the time. Them. Next question. Let's go. Mark, 1996, <clears throat> the us. What are your favorite books? What are my favorite books? All right, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just going to name two. Um, Robert Monroe, Journeys Out of the Body. You guys might have seen on my story posts on Instagram or Snapchat. I love this book so much because this guy is a pioneer, basically. Well, people have been doing astral projection for a very long time, but he's like the guy who like kind of brought it up more and made it kind of popular in the u.s so he's this like pioneer and he's just like amazing at astral projecting and he basically the whole book is just him just talking about his astral projections and all of his experiences and it's just so amazing to listen to like how this guy can astral project with such ease and be able to travel all these outer worlds like through astral projection these dimensions and these like different realities that he would encounter and it just really opens up your mind and your perspective on like just life itself and Mm -hmm. like what what are like the possibilities what is your definition of astral projecting definition because we watched a video on it that said astral projecting is equivalent to lucid dreaming but Mm -hmm. then Monroe's talking about how you're actually leaving your body and mm-hmm. traveling. Yeah, so I think the thing is, so is like astral projection. I see be, there a lot of people say that when you sleep at, at night, you're um, actually astral projecting every single night, and you might not be conscious of it, but they say you are. That would be cool. And that's possible because this one guy, Ryan Cropper he or cropper copper cropper ryan cropper he would basically like talk about how when he would astral project he would see these people and he would call them sleepers because they would just like they would just be like kind of like zombies i guess like they weren't really understanding what was going on 
because these people they weren't really conscious that they were astral projecting so i really don't know like I, am, am i um oh that uh, feels so good <laughs> yeah. so like astral projection i feel like i i guess i would de define it as uh your soul or spirit consciousness exiting your body so just outside of your body that's what i would call astral projection outer body you don't think that your mind you. can travel realms inside your like i don't know how to word it i, I know like why saying. do you think you have to leave your body to do that why do you think why do i think uh be i mean i don't know there, there's just so many layers i don't see, even know what i'm saying see i um no i get what you're saying you're you're just basically saying how do you know it's actually true that you're exiting your body how do you not know how do you know that it's not just your mind making it up that's what you're saying well that's also a question i have but i'm saying like couldn't you kind of travel somewhere else without your mind oh fucking no <laughs> without your mind leaving your body i don't know where i'm going oh with this. could you travel somewhere else without your mind or your leaving soul your, body? your soul or whatever it is without your soul leaving your body like kind of like it's another state of consciousness but it's i don't know man are you asking i don't know <laughs> how how like <laughs> i would be experiencing like me me being like I don't know, in Egypt, like, but still being in my mind? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I thought I had it, but now it just seems like so far, like, I don't even know where I was <laughs> going with it. I mean, maybe, maybe it I is. just want people to comment what they think astral projecting is. Yeah, that's actually a great point. Yeah, yes. comment below. Comment below. What Everyone you says something different. So yeah, well, there's, there's not too many different opinions, I guess. No, but I mean, I feel like people either have the lucid dreamy idea or they have that yeah. you're actually leaving your body idea. Like. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. I don't know. Yeah, so comment below. What do you think? Like, is it? Do you think that lucid dreaming is the same thing as astral projection, or do you think they're separate things? Because for me, I don't know. I I feel like it'd be cooler to actually leave your body. <laughs> yeah, <it> would, <laughs> but that's yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just heard like people explain how like they're completely different experiences when you astral project. And when you lucid dream, they're completely different experiences. They would explain, um, like, how you feel is different, what you see, how you see is different, like, there's sensations. The and, cord. And, yeah, some some people would say that there's it's a cord. It's only some people? Uh, I think, yeah, some, pe some people say that there's a cord. So... I mean, you never. You didn't explain the cord. Yeah. I don't know what you mean. I mean, by honestly, cord. I I don't remember if they have they would say that the cord comes out of the head or some other part of the body. So that's why I didn't yeah, want to say. Yeah, but this is during remember. astral projecting, not lucid yeah. dreaming. You didn't make that distinction. Yeah, during so. astral projection. There's but, a cord that connects your soul to your body. Yeah. So when you're leaving your body, you can see the cord attached from yourself, from your soul to the body. Yes, but um. Like, for me, I've had many lucid dreaming experiences myself, and um, it's usually just, like, I don't know. It's different because when I felt like I had an astral projection, what would happen was, like, my mind would be buzzing. Like, there'd be a really, like, high-pitched sound, like, a really high-pitched frequency sound. And then, like, what would happen is, like, it would feel like you're literally like your soul is just getting ripped out like it's like the craziest feeling in the world like it like it feels like you're just dropping down a roller coaster like free falling that's what it literally feels like you're when free you're falling dreaming? no when you're about to astral project uh. and then that happens and then then you're out and th that's happened multiple times when i've astral projected Wait, no. so like i would have I that sensation you never did astral project. well i feel like what those experiences were were astral projections because they were so different from lucid dreaming because yeah, I, I thought like you felt like you were about to but you never did well i i feel like i might have somewhat 
astral projected like it might have been like i might not have been in the dimension where it's normal to be astral projecting because like what would happen was like i was this consciousness after that happened and there was nothing around me like it was just like total blackness it was like nothingness and like everything it was it was very weird because like i was just like floating like and so i didn't i didn't know where i was but i was conscious and i was like whoa like it's, it's insane it's because like i don't even it's really difficult to explain but another instance was when like that happened that same feeling like just getting like sucked out or like the roller coaster free falling feeling and then like i would just i was just like floating up towards my ceiling and i could kind of see but it was like really really dim and like dark and i've heard like when it's really dim or dark that's just because you haven't like developed the yeah, the sense. connection to the astral realms so that that was like little that was my last um astral projection experience where like i couldn't see too well it was like really dim and i just floated up like to the ceiling and i didn't really like have that much control over my body so that is why i feel like they're a little different do you think i should get a light or something no turn this on looks the fine yeah you can't turn on the light mm. we lost power yeah <laughs> we're out on. here with our is that gonna hold the camera what this thing like if i tilt it down to show the candle <clears throat> oh go ahead we're out here with our candle light that's yeah, yeah. Because we have no power. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, wait. And another book that I love is... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first book. <laughs> I knew this video. I knew it was going to turn out like this. <laughs> that I was just going to, like, dive deep into these topics. And uh, I'm glad mm -hmm. I did. But The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho is another book that I absolutely love so much. Because... It's this, like, very deep spiritual book. I feel book. like you did not say his last name right. <laughs> Paulo Coelho. C if he's Spanish, then it's probably Sueo. But yeah, it might be. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just being in line. And, um, yeah, it's, this, it's just this really deep spiritual book about this kid who has, like, a, a this, like, repeating dream of this going to Egypt, where the pyramids are, and finding treasure. And basically, oh no, I don't want to spoil it. I was about to spoil it. Oh my god! <laughs> don't don't right, spoil well, it. It's about there's like there's just like synchronicities. Like he he like sees omens, and I, I really like this one explanation by this one guy. He he said that the lesson of the alchemist is the truth of nature and the secret behind magic that is everything and is made of vibrations. And if you know the correct words, the vibrations, or if you can mentally intune yourself, the part of the veil, the veil, <laughs> to the correct frequency, you can command the elements. So it's just like this very deep book about like tuning into certain frequencies to like fulfill your life. So I love this book. Check it out. Is it about someone's life? Like doing yeah, it's, it's, those it's, things? Yeah. Yeah, basically, it's a, it's a journey. It's about it's about an adventure mm -hmm. of this guy just trying to figure out his life because he's been a shepherd his whole life, and that's kind of been his whole life. And he didn't want to do that anymore. He wanted to try something else. He really wanted to travel, and this book really hits hits home, home on. It's about the journey, not the destination. This book is precisely about that, and. It just re resonates so much with me. Mm -hmm. Next one? Yeah, next one. What programs or technology might you start working with that you haven't already used? Oh, God, I forget the name of this one pro program here. Can I, I'm going to look it up real quick because this guy, he sent me a DM about it. And <laughs> I want to make sure you guys know because for you artists, I feel like you guys could use this as well. One second. That noise was awful. <laughs> I think I just pressed something on there. <laughs> Where? Is it okay? On there. What'd you press? Something in the front. Oh, you muted it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Alright, read it. 
What programs or technology might you start working with that you haven't already used? Did you say the name? Who said it? The shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, I don't really, like, look up a lot of different softwares that I don't have. I, I just really like to stick with what I have and just work with what I got. But one of the, the only one software that has recently come up that I would get is this one that basically <laughs> it finds the tune of your song so that if you're using like autotune as you know I do um, it helps you find out what key you're singing in basically so that the autotune sounds good and yeah yeah I don't remember the name of the software but that's the software that we use <laughs> I missed all of next that. question where did your humbleness and passion begin from young soul vibe or did my humbleness and passion begin? All right, so I guess like the the most of the humbleness came from when I really became during my spiritual awakening at the end of high school. That's probably when the most of the humbleness probably yeah. came. I mean, I wasn't really like a super cocky kid ever or anything like that. <laughs> like, but like. I got definitely way more humble, like realizing like how we are all one, we are energy, we are consciousness, and we are all just, we are, we are the same, basically, we are equal, we are consciousness, just in different bodies, so once I like realized like, you know, like you are me and I am you, then that definitely just made me a, I get a lot more humble, and um, what was the other And where did your passion, passion begin? And the passion really... I guess it's your... He means your passion for, like, just... I don't think music, right? The just goodness like of people and having people be the best they can be. And Do you think that's what he meant? I feel like he means, like, your passion, meaning, like, you're so positive and, like, your passion for music, like... I don't know. Where did you start? Uh, when did you start, like... <laughs> So, wanting to help people kind of I feel like because that's your know, passion I, I feel like it's to make people feel like they're worth something and that we should all love each other yeah I mean for me the passion really I mean it it all really began from really just loving certain things and that would be like um honestly like I had a passion for video games right and then like I loved soccer so much I had such a passion for soccer and I really like dedicated like a, a lot of my life to it and like I feel like this passion just kept growing and evolving and from like loving the game so much and trying to be like the best I could be like because I wanted to be professional and I just loved it so much and then like also loving playing guitar because I, I w and then I started playing guitar I, be, I could just had such a big passion for playing guitar I wanted to be like a rock star so I had this passion for this too and it's like I feel like this passion just yeah, kept but going not and everyone has passion like that no he's just asking me though like no but I'm just saying like I don't think you can pinpoint where your passion comes from, like that kind of passion I feel like that's just who you are because you've been passionate since a young age whereas yeah. like me I'm not I ha wasn't passionate about anything at a young age like I wasn't super good at one thing like I still haven't found that one thing that I'm super good at mm. that I want to do for the rest of my life like yeah so I don't know but I think that your passion right now for like what you <laughs> do with your music and what you do with Instagram mm -hmm. and like positive positivity is just how you have realized that we're all so like even lucky to just be here right now exactly and that's where I think your passion right now is coming from because you realize how lucky we are and how brief this all really is <clears throat> and like how you just want to make the most of every moment mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah making the most of every moment exactly i mean 
yeah i've just had a passion like for so many different things and i feel like that's where it's spilled into like i even like had such a passion for drawing at a really young age and mm -hmm. And then skateboarding was like another huge <laughs> passion of mine. I really wanted to go like professional. I would really grind hard. Like I loved it. Yeah. I loved it so much. And then and then it yeah. became. It's me, funny how much things change. Yeah, it, it was like, like drawing. Put, drawing was actually yeah. the number one. I th that was the first passion, like real serious passion. I think. Wow. Like kind of like your bro. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, so, like, it evolved. Drawing, soccer. I mean, even going out into nature at a very young age, that was something that was really in me. And I feel like nature helps you appreciate everything oh, so yes. much more. Oh, yes, 100%. And I feel like people who lack being just outside for, like, an hour, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It just brings such peace and like and revitalizing and it's like refreshing and connects you you just realize how like complicated everything actually is like yeah it's not just like oh i'm gonna go outside like you see how everything's so connected everything depends on everything so, else yeah everything is so connected and it's 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 amazing like we all need each other yeah we all literally need each other and yeah once exactly like this passion once i like really realized like all this like all the interconnectedness in humans and all of life animals just everything nature i really like once i started really connecting the dots and seeing how we're this energy and like that the passion just really started fueling up and then like i'm like like started making music at this time I'm like oh my god like i can connect this like i want people to feel the same passion that i feel yeah basically and that's what fueled my yeah. passion even more i'm just like i want people to be excited all the time i want people to always be having like something to look forward to because they love doing it because their soul just gets so nourished by doing this thing and i want people to feel that appreciate life and realize how such a blessing it is to be alive the amount of gratitude that i have is what really definitely pushes this passion forward and i just want <laughs> everyone to just feel the best that they can be i feel the passion <laughs> i just want people to be self actualized i want people to really just strive to be the best that they can be like f like everyone has so much potential and i don't think i think a lot of people don't realize how much potential they actually have because of so many limiting mindsets people are thinking like i can't do this i can't do that it's like no yeah, you can so you, you can actually do and i'm guilty too. like I, even i've like found myself falling into this trap too like i would feel like no nah, like i can't do this but then like an another day i'd be like thinking like oh yeah i can do this like a hundred percent like a million percent and i'd be like oh my god like why why wasn't i thinking like this before like i could have been doing like so much better if i just had this growth mindset and i think it's yeah. i just this growth mindset is we really need to instill this in our children yeah creativity and i think yeah just love and gratitude yeah. Fuel, it fuels me. That's all, folks. <laughs> um, next? Yeah. Chaotic Beats. Uh, what do you personally think God is? What do I personally think God is? So, I mentioned this in my song with Bismarck. I... Is that Whoa, thunder? That oh, is shit. serious thunder. Or that might be like fireworks. Sounds like no, nah, that's that, thunder. but there's like no clouds. I'm confused. I see stars. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think this lighting is like horrible? It should be like stop. I think it's like a fireside. Fireside bed. chat. That is thunder. I'm scared. Should we head in? Yes. Oh, right, we'll continue this another time. <laughs> What is God to be continued? <laughs> it's a wrap, folks.